Hello boys and girls, ladies and gents. Uh, this is actually going to be a pre-recorded stream today and we're going to be looking at the new version of Smart Copilot. And for anyone who's not aware, if we just look up Smart Copilot, this is the website, it's skyforcrew.com and as you can see the latest version today is 3.0.4 uh, these are the configuration files there's lots of different configuration files for different aircraft you can only use smart copilot with an aircraft that has a config file but we'll go into that in a little bit this is where this is the the, the web page where you can go and download smart copilot and there is a, uh, a short trial version so you can try it out but I was going to give you a breakdown if you've actually already downloaded Smart Copilot and then we've actually already extracted it and put it into our plugins folder so down here you can see I've got a, a Smart Copilot folder and in there is just my Smart Copilot stuff so with X-Plane loaded, uh, it will show up under your plugins menu uh, and you'll have what's called Show UI, Smart Copilot Show UI. And then that brings up this window here. That's what it looks like in the sim anyway. Um, I would say before your, if, if you've got a, someone you can do a flight with, you're going to need to do a number of pre-flight checks before you get started and I've listed those here I don't know if you're going to be able to read them um, but basically you need the same X-Plane version so if you want to find that out you can go into settings and about X-Plane and it will tell you so here my version is 11.41 R1 You've got to have the same version both both sides both simulators have to have the same version we also need to have the same smart copilot version at the time of writing as i say it's 3.0.4 and you need to have the same aircraft version i'm for today's uh demonstration i'm just going to be using the default cessna so I've actually already got there uh, there are numerous other aircraft ever mentioned on the website there's there's the Tolis there's the jar designs there's seven five seven seven six sevens from flight factor there's all sorts of different aircraft will work with smart copilot to different effects um, so we're going to use a default aircraft today if we've got the same x-plane version you're going to have the same default aircraft uh, it's good I always think to start with a, a, a default aircraft just to make sure you can get the connection and everything's working properly uh, point five here you're going to need the same AIRAC version my advice you're going to need a Navigraph subscription and you're going to need the latest Navigraph data um, either that or again both sides are going to need the same the same version data again you can probably find that out from within your x-plane custom data there'll be a readme text in there and that will show you what version sorry cycle info will show you what cycle info you've got I'm obviously running the latest 1913 at the time of making this video so it's, that's important your, these are pre-flight checks once you're at that sort of point you're now hopefully you're going to decide who's the pilot who's going to be the co-pilot uh, if you're going to be flying a flight plan uh, if you create the flight plan in something like Simbrief you can exchange if you if you both have exactly the same uh, flight plan file for that particular aircraft default aircrafts are obviously the .fms files um, if you've both shared that FMS file it will load up on both sides of the FMC 
so that was point six the flight plan shared and saved to the correct location again that depends on the aircraft so then you you would load up x-plane in this situation here where we're in x-plane one other thing you need to definitely check is this this checkbox here runways follow terrain contours and it will require a scenery reload so it needs to be on both sides the same either on or off my suggestion is to have it switched off so the runways are you, you have pancake flat runways very very flat runways uh, if you've made a change on that box you need to do a scenery reload under developer you can do reload to scenery and that will then reload it as I say I would I would recommend running flat so off and I would uh, you'll see everything looks quite pancake flat around the airports it's one of the downsides but it just it's it kind of ensures you won't crash when you're coming into land um, now if this steps eight and nine are not required um, but I find it can be useful if you're flying with someone for the first time so load up at your departure airport at your departure gate probably in the Cessna and then just do a quick smart co-pilot connection just to ensure that neither of you move you don't want one of you going up or one of you going down because uh, that's the sign you've got different elevation data uh, that's actually something else I haven't put in here you both need the same scene the same scenery must have the same scenery and it's essential if uh, either of you are running HD mesh v4 you, you need it both of you need that on or both of you need it off same for the UHD mesh you need that on or off both both sides must be identical for this to work uh, but going back to the Cessna steps 8 and 9 load up at the, de at the departure airport do a quick smart co-pilot connection if everything's fine disconnect load up at your destination airport so where you're going to arrive again pick a gate both of you load up at the Cessna at that gate do a quick smart smart co-pilot connection and you don't want to see either you don't want to see the slave go up or down basically if you do one of you has got different mesh data one of you's got different elevation data and you need to fix that because you'll crash when you come into land as I say, those points are not required, but it's a good. Uh, if you want to have a successful flight, it can be worth doing those. Point ten, SE will uh, Smart Copilot will warn you if there's any errors. Generally, um, if you've got different elevation data, if you've got different runways follow contours, if the aircrafts are different versions, if your config files are different versions. Smart Copilot will warn you and give you normally give one of you an on-screen message saying what the error was. So we're pretty much with those basic ten points connected. You're ready now in Smart Copilot to make a connection ready for your flight. So at the with the chosen aircraft at the chosen gate at the destination for your flight both of you load up um, I would advise before you connect smart copilot is to load the fuel and passengers separately you can in some aircraft do it when you're connected but I think it's advisable I would suggest to load the aircraft while you're not connected once the aircraft is then loaded still cold and dark all the doors closed or as much of it in a cold and dark situation initiate your smart co-pilot connection 
ready for the flight. Uh, again, depending on the aircraft and how the FMC works, you'll be able to share that flight plan file and be able to load it on both sides. Again, before you taxi out and before you begin flying, I would advise you both check the, the, the legs and the, the points in the flight plan match. Uh, if they don't, you need to try and get them matching while you're on the ground. Um, either enter points, either disconnect and the one who's missing points, add them manually and then reconnect the co-pilot. Um, and one final tip I would give is if you're during the flight, sometimes you will find things become what I term desynced. Uh, for example, quite often in the tube liners, the slave side, it appears that the autopilot has disconnected. But when you talk to the, the, the pilot and you ask him, has the, has the autopilot disconnected on your side? He will say no, more often than not. The slave doesn't touch the autopilot in that instance. Leave it up to the pilot. There is... If you switch the whole autopilot off on, while you're still connected, both of you, so it's all disconnected, all switched off, and then try and reconnect it, that sometimes will resync it. Um, I'm going to move over now. That's enough of the pre-flight checks. You would uh, there's a couple of new features I would like to point out in the UI. So we're over to the the simulator, and we're looking at the, the smart co-pilot UI now. One of the biggest changes you're going to see. Uh, is a massive benefit now this sky server so this effectively allows you to connect without having to set up all that port forwarding and all that horrible stuff uh, you just share so at this precise moment I've got a partner ID there it does change each time you start smart copilot it won't stay the same but you can share that with your your intended f uh, flight partner your co-pilot here share the, both of you share your numbers uh, once you've started it someone else would have given me a number so I'm, I'm only going to paste my own number in there at the moment I'd hit the join and that actually would then connect me um, I'm going to show it to you let me see if I can do this uh, can right one second so if I then open Bear with me a second, I'm just going to grab the number. So I can then show you how the connection works. Just getting right, that's the number of my other PC over there. So if I add that, if I click the join button, oh. I didn't start it on the other one. Where well, one moment. So when I click the join button, that sends a join to my other PC. I do allow. It's actually the aircraft's in a different position, but that would that would be how you do the 
the join button. Uh, and as I say, the, the pilot would generally be the master and the co-pilot will generally be the slave. I'm going to end this video here. I hope you've enjoyed. It has gone on a tiny little bit longer than I thought, but thanks ever so much, in, thanks ever so much for watching. This is FTP Stopping the Clock. Hope you all have a great one. Bye-bye.